All right, hi friends. Um, today I'm going to read you the story and it's called On the Move Mass Migrations. This is it. All right. It's written by Scotty Cohen, illustrated by Susan Detweiler. Imagine seeing hundreds or thousands of the same sort of animal in one place. Many kinds of animals gather in large groups at certain times of the year. This is how some of them find a mate. Animals sometimes travel in big groups from one location or climate to another one. They do this to find food or to give birth in a warm, safe place. These movements are called migrations. Spring, summer, fall, or winter, you can see huge numbers of animals on the move. Spring paints the forest in fresh shades of purple, yellow, and green. Warm rain falls and drips and drops on the cold ground. Spotted salamanders crawl out of their underground homes after dark. The earth is soft and cool beneath their feet. The salamanders are ready to go. This is their big night, and soon they are on the move. They wiggle through the woods. They squiggle across the fields. They wiggle, wriggle across the roads. Finally, they reach the wetland pool. There they find their mates. Females lay their eggs just under the surface of the water. Spring swoops onto the prairie on a brisk, bold breeze. A warbling, trumpeting, chirping noise gets louder and louder. Soon, hundreds of thousands of sandhill cranes fill the sky. They're on the move. When you look at the cranes flying, they look tiny. Once they're on the ground, you can see that some of them are taller than you. During spring migration, they court each other by doing what looks like a dance. They flap their wings and bow their heads, run, skip, and leap. Thousands of horseshoe crabs are on the move in the spring. They look like little armored tanks with spiked tails. They scuttle out of the bay onto the beach to mate. The females lay eggs in the sand. Red knots fly in to eat the eggs. The birds are tired and thin after their long trip from South America. Soon they will be plump and ready to fly to the Arctic to nest. Common green darner dragonflies hover over nearby gardens and fields. They are on their way north. Larger groups of them will pass through here when they fly south in the fall. The bright summer sun shines all day and night in the far north. A mother caribou snorts and shakes her head. She's telling her calf to stay close to her. He's still too small to protect himself against bears and wolves. Thousands of caribou travel north every spring. Calves are born where many tender young plants grow. The caribou have plenty to eat there. By midsummer, the herd is again on the move. They travel up into the mountains. Cool mountain breezes help keep mosquitoes away from them. Thousands of chimney swifts are on the move in late summer and early fall. Each evening they soar and swoop above an old brick smokestack. They dip and dive. They chitter and chatter like children on a playground. Around and around they fly, and then they swirl down into the smokestack to spend the night. They are getting ready to travel south for the winter. Most of them will be gone by the end of October. The end of the summer is near. Crickets are singing their evening song. Deep in a cave, a Brazilian free-tailed bat pup wakes up and flexes her wings. She has been roosting all day and now she's hungry. 
and she's not the only one. Soon, huge clouds of small, dark, winged bodies whirl through the sky. The bats are hunting for moths, beetles, and other insects. For the first time in her life, the new pup joins her mother to look for food. In the fall, she and the rest of her colony will be on the move, migrating south for the winter. Up north, the autumn air is chilly. Monarch butterflies flutter their brilliant orange and gold wings. Soon they are on the move. More and more monarchs join the flight until tens of millions of monarchs are flying south together. These butterflies have not made this trip before. Somehow they know to take the same route as the monarchs who lived before them. They even stop to rest in the same places. Once they reach their southern home, the monarchs will sleep for most, much of the winter. Where polar bears live, fall brings a cruel chill to the air. Days grow short and snow clouds fill the sky. On huge padded feet, the polar bears lumber toward the water's edge. They have been on land for several months. When they are on land, they eat only berries, roots, bird eggs, and small animals. The bears are very hungry now. They test the ice that forms on the surface of the water. Once it's frozen solid, they are on the move. They travel across the ice to catch seals. It's the end of a sunny autumn day in the forest. Gold, orange, and red leaves flutter in the trees. More leaves cover the ground. A soft rustling sound comes from the base of an oak. A cottonmouth snake is on the move. As the cool evening passes, many kinds of snakes slip and slide and slither through the dry leaves. Every year at this time, snakes that live in cold climates travel to dens to spend, the, to spend the winter. They often return to the same den each year, and large groups of snakes may share the same den. I wonder if they have to be the same type of snake. That would be interesting to look up. Most of the year, northern elephant seals live alone. They swim, dive, and hunt. Come winter, they are on the move. They haul out on land and soon the beach is covered with seals. They squawk, squeak, bellow, belch, grunt, and gurgle. Mature males battle each other to prove their strength. Pregnant females give birth. Come summer, the seals are back on land to shed old skin and hair replacing it with new molt. Elephant seals do not need to eat while they're on land. They have lots of fat called blubber that is stored on their bodies. You know what? I had no idea that elephant seals molted. No idea about that. I'd like to learn a little more about those creatures too. Summer, fall, and winter, salmon are on the move. They swim from the ocean upstream to the place where they were born. It's hard work. The salmon leap and splash as they struggle against the current. They do not eat along the way. When they finally reach their spawning ground, they are worn out and weak. Overhead, large numbers of bald eagles wheel through the sky. Many of the eagles live in the area year round. Come winter, some travel from a frozen world where there isn't enough food, and they are all eager to feast on salmon. Out in the ocean, thousands of gray whales are on the move. They swim slowly and steadily south for the winter to warm lagoons to give birth to their calves. The whales travel thousands of miles. They swim all day and all night for three months. 
Once they, once they reach the lagoons, the whales do not find much to eat. They live on the fat stored in their bodies. In the spring, they travel with their calves to northern waters, where they feed on small shrimp-like animals, amphipods, from the bottom of the ocean floor. Okay, and then here are some um, facts. I'm just going to read a few of them, but you are welcome to read them from the picture. It says, most people think about birds migrating in the spring and the fall because huge flocks of birds are so visible in many areas. But birds are not the only animals that migrate. Some mammals, reptiles, fish, birds, amphibians, and even some invertebrates migrate. Many mammals and birds learn the migration route from their parents, while others travel only by instinct. Scientists don't understand how animals know when and where to travel. Hmm. And then there's the last page, and it has more facts. I'm going to just read the facts about the horseshoe crabs. Once a year, horseshoe crabs gather on beaches to breed. The females lay their eggs in the sand near the high tide line. Around the new and full moons in late May and early June, you can see millions of these invertebrates on the beaches around the Delaware Bay. You can also see them on other beaches up and down the Atlantic coast. Huh. You know, every time I went to Rhode Island as a child, that's where um, a lot of my family is from, we would see horseshoe crabs, but we usually went in July. So I guess that's why we didn't see so many of these. It was a rarity to see one. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this book on the move, Mass Migrations. And, um, and I hope that it helps you um, with your slide that you're working on. All right. Bye.